In this video, I'm going to show you how to subscribe to a Google Calendar both in your organization and outside of your organization, how to view the calendar you subscribe to, how to enable notifications, and how to duplicate events from a subscribed calendar into your calendar. First, I'm going to show you how you can subscribe to a calendar from within your organization. Navigate to your Google Calendar, click on the Settings icon, click Settings. I'm going to minimize this General tab and click Add Calendar. Here users have a few options. The first one is subscribe to a calendar. You can search for users in your organization and subscribe to their main calendar, which is the calendar that is your name. Remember, by default, your calendar is public to your organization and all of your calendar details are public by default as well. In a previous video, I showed you how to disable those features to protect sensitive data, and I'll link it in the description box below. The third option on the Add Calendar menu is Browse Resources. You will only see this option in your work email and not all organizations enable it, but at Blue Hills, we do. When you click on Browse Resources, you will see a list of calendars teachers, staff, and students can subscribe to. If you would like to preview a calendar before you subscribe to it, hover over the name of the calendar and to the right, click on the eyeball. The calendar will open up in a new tab and you'll be able to view all of the calendar details. To subscribe to a calendar, check the box to the left of the calendar name. Everyone at Blue Hills should subscribe to the BHR calendar as that includes important district information. Bonus tip, if you would like a calendar displayed here in the Browse Resources section, put in an IT ticket. Let them know the name of the calendar and who should have editing access to the calendar. These calendars that are in the Browse Resources section are not owned by a specific person. Instead, they are owned by the organization. So if someone leaves the organization or changes roles, the calendar can be passed on to someone else. The next tab is Browse Calendars of Interest. When I covered calendar subscriptions in my classroom, this is the tab that students really liked. From here, users can subscribe to religious holidays and sports. So for example, I can click on football, NFL, and I can scroll to New England Patriots and subscribe to that calendar so I never miss a game. Now that you have subscribed to calendars both inside and outside of your organization, let's view them in our calendar. Navigate back to Google Calendar, and over on the left, under Other Calendars, is where all your subscriptions or calendars that you are not an owner of is listed. You can turn them on or off at any time. If you are not seeing a calendar, that is simply because you don't have the box checked. One additional thing I like to do is change the color of the calendars. I like to keep my calendar blue, and I'm going to change the BHR calendar to green, and the Patriots calendar to brown. Now I can visually differentiate between all the different calendars. Next, I want to show you how to enable notifications on a calendar you subscribe to. You might be asking yourself, why would I want to do that? Sometimes calendars are edited, and I want to know when there is a change in a calendar so I can be prepared. For example, maybe in-service day is rescheduled, or maybe I want to know when a Patriots game is announced or rescheduled. To enable notifications, click on the gear icon in Google Calendar. Click Settings. Over on the left, I'm going to minimize the General tab so we can see it a little bit better. Under Settings for Other Calendars, click on the calendar you want to enable notifications for. You can choose to receive event notifications, and if you don't know what that is, it's basically a reminder you set such as Remind Me in 10 minutes before an event, and you can choose whether or not you want to receive a reminder via pop-up notification or via an email. The section I want to show you is Other Notifications. Here, I can set that any time a new event is posted to this calendar, I will receive an email notification. I can also do the same for changed events, canceled events, when people RSVP to an event, and we can even select a daily agenda be sent to us via email every day, which Google sends you at 5 a.m. Here is an example of an email notification I received that something was changed in the BHR calendar. Most of the time, I just delete these emails, but they do come in handy. The last thing I want to show you is how to duplicate events from a subscribed calendar to your calendar. You might be thinking, why would I do that? 
Well, for example, my calendar is open to teachers and staff to make appointments. And Thursday, we have an in-service day. And I want to make sure I add that event to my personal calendar, the one that is my name, so that I don't double book myself. To do this, click on the event, click on the three dot menu icon. In this case, I'm going to select copy to S. Albernez, which is my test account, but this would be your main calendar name. Now, since I am adding this event to my personal calendar, I have the option of changing the name of the event. Most of the time, I just leave it as it is. And if you would like to, you can add a notification. And when complete, click Save. Now we can see that this event has been added to my personal calendar, which is blue, and the green calendar, which is BHR calendar, is also showing. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out, and I hope you all have a wonderful day.